joining us today, we have Yvonne Michael, the daughter of the late, very reverend Father Mina Nematala, and she's going to be sharing with us her experiences about the 50 years in Australia and her journey coming out to Australia. Yvonne, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Susie. So tell us about your life in Egypt and your school and growing up in Egypt. Uh, as my memory only serves me right, uh, we had um, primary and then I went to first high school and then uh, dad was ordained as a priest. That was just like hazy. I didn't know what's happening. Um, that was exciting but I didn't know exactly what it means for father, my dad to be a priest. I used to go to church every week and we used to go all the Lent masses but to have my father as a priest it's something else. So uh, dad was ordained in um, St. Mark Cathedral in Alexandria. There was a lot, a lot of people I haven't seen in my life. Thousands of people were there and there's of course some of the ranks from the, um, the army because that used to be in uh, the army. So, And uh, there was the bishop there, I think Bishop Maximus ordained that. And uh, it was a lot of people and everybody. And there was in the newspaper, it came the first uh, Coptic priest to travel to Australia. Like, I didn't know what's Australia, and except from the geography. I know what it is, but I knew nothing about it. Uh, we had the basic English. I didn't learn English. We had the basic English. Uh, we know the letters, we know the alphabet, and we know a few words, but not to keep us going for um, a conversation or to talk about ourselves. I went to school here and we had um, a community like most of the Egyptians, they used to come over to that school. So because of our location where we landed, we got to uh, Marrickville. We lived in Marrickville for a few years and this is where we started school, everybody. And this is where most of the community used to live in Marrickville because dad used to have every day these applications for people who wanted to immigrate to Australia and um, he used to fill them out and send them back. All he used to do is that. Um, and we had a lot, a lot of people coming to Marrickville so they can be close to my dad and close to the church. So how old were you when you came to Australia? I was 15. Very young, yes. <laughs> but very important age too. Uh, yes, yes I was. So so. Do you remember your journey coming to Australia? Yes, very much so. Um, we came by, uh, by boat, we didn't travel by aeroplane. And uh, we stayed there for over 40 days. I didn't know what was going on from uh, Alexandria to Athens and then we, sw uh, we changed uh, the boat. We had a, a larger one and we didn't have any uh, Coptic community in the journey except for one, one uh, Coptic from Egypt, from Alexandra, and uh, doctor, the late Dr. Uh, Farid Farag, he was the doctor on, on that ship. Um, I was excited because it's something new, something different, and as a teenager, you know, I wanted to discover, and um, I didn't know much about Australia, to be quite honest, except they speak English. So. Um, we were in the, um, on the way here, Dad used, uh, he had everything that the actual church would use, all the different kinds of books, all the different utilities, uh, even uh, the shoria, the everything, everything. The incense, like he can do mass anytime. He's got the whole thing and his outfit and his everything. We just, he brought it, he thought of it. We had about eight months in Egypt that uh, that kind of uh, dedicated that to kind of think every day what sort of um, things he would use for the whole year because we have uh, different types of books that we use throughout the church so he went and he got everything and um, of course mum got a lot of things too they bought because we don't know what we're coming up for so bought a lot of clothes a lot of sheets a lot of um, uh, China wear, everything mm. <laughs> was really good. So we had everything ready to start, but we didn't know what what's facing us or where we're going to start or where we're going to live. So on the boat, it was like every week, Dad used to make uh, the urban, and he took he asked the, uh, the first thing he asked was, where's the chef? 
He said, I want to bake some bread, and it's a holy bread, and I want to use a place that where I can do the mass. So he was really happy. They were, it was a Greek ship, so they understood what they're coming from, and they tried to help him. And they had him uh, in the bookshop, because Daddy specifically said, I don't want to be in the bar area or in the dancing floor area. I want something quieter. So I don't want even to stop people, public people, to use it. So they gave him the book, uh, the local library. So it was pretty quiet. So we used to have a mass every week. And of course, we were the congregation, me and my brothers and mum. Uh, sometimes the other family, Isis and her late husband, worked, used to join us. And Dr. Farid Farag used to join us. And we had a, a big, we were fasting because we traveled in December on the Eve, Christmas Eve. Dad, of course, did a, a mass. And um, we had a, a feast. He told the chef that no, uh, no meat till we, uh, I, you know, our uh, Christmas. So he did that and he, he prepared an amazing feast. A lot of really, really nice food. And we all had it and we were quite happy. It was interesting, but we didn't communicate much with other people because most of them were Greek, as I said, and they, mm. they didn't speak English mm. or Arabic. So <laughs> we couldn't communicate well. So it was just us. So we had a, a family bond for <laughs> 40 days uh, together so, yeah. till we arrived well, in sounds, Melbourne first. It, it sounds like um, everything was kind of prepared from having a Greek ship as well to an accommodating chef to giving you a place to do the masses, even the point of you being able to fast and then break mm. your fast. Yeah. So when you arrived, when you first arrived, um, it was Melbourne, as, as yes, we know. Yes, yes. And how long did you stay in Melbourne for? I think we stayed for two days. And we had a lot of people waiting for a lot. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of, at the time, um, they came at the ship and they, I didn't know that we were staying more than a day. I thought we were going to go out for the day and then um, depart. But apparently the ship landed there for a couple of days. So we used to be out the whole day. The first thing Dad said, he will do the mass. He did the mass and the people were so happy to see, of course, a Coptic priest, and they haven't had a mass since they arrived in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, he told them he will do another mass in the next day because he's staying two days. And we used to sleep, of course, on the, on the ship. So um, going and spend the whole day with the community, and he stayed with them and talked, and, and I think he took some confessions, and, and then went back again to the ship, and then another day till we arrived in uh, Sydney. So he would have been the first priest to arrive to Melbourne as well. That's so right. that's why it was important to have that mass and the confessions and things. So when you arrived in Sydney, what was your first impression when you landed? Were there a lot of people waiting, like Melbourne? Uh, yeah, there was more. But I knew this is our destination, whereas in Sydney. I forgot to say, we landed in Perth, I think, our first Australian uh, port. But it was a day trip and we went to a church. The first thing Dad saw, there's a church that so I will go, thank God. So I think Anglican or Catholic, I'm not sure. We went in, we prayed our father, and in the way out, there was um, a girl, uh, like a lady. She came running to said, oh, where are you from? And he told her, and she just gave him like um, a candle, uh, a, ho a holder for the candle. She said, uh, can you please accept this? He's, he told her that he's going to uh, establish a new church. We haven't got a church. So she gave it to him. We don't know where she come from, what happened, but in the way out, that he, she gave it to him. She said, can you accept that and uh, um, for the candles to So this, to light. Was, this was in Perth, Perth. yeah, and the then first, Melbourne? The Melbourne, yeah. And then Sydney. Yeah, but in Perth mm -hmm. there wasn't any community. We didn't do any mass or anything. It was just for the ship to stop there for a day and then we travelled straight away. I think it was a few hours. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so arriving in Sydney, there were a lot more, more. people. And what yes. Yes, and apparently they, um, they had a, a boat for, um, I think it was Amin, um, uh, Amin oh. Salib. Yeah. He was, uh, and it was others as well with him. They had like a, the smaller boat, like a tender boat to come over on the ship to go inside and to greet my dad. And, you know, he'd tell him that we are waiting for you because it's, uh, it's overwhelming. You go to a country and you know nothing about mm -hmm. it and who's going to be, we have no family, no, no friends. So I think he kind of made it easy to say that he's here and the congregation are waiting for you outside and uh, 
it's a public holiday and dad said yes i brought uh, the urban with me for the hamel i will do a mass he was surprised he said a mass today he said yes you didn't you say it's a public holiday and there's a lot of people gathering he said, yes the waiting for you so he went inside um the actual ship uh, to you know to make all the paperwork when you go out your passport and all that to help my dad and he was surprised to see the amount of um, luggages or boxes we had because we had a, a really large boxes wooden boxes to accompany all the things that the books it was really 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 a lot of books and um, things for the church and everything so we had uh, lots of boxes like this a wooden boxes a real big ones and as was written on it, it was very clearly marked. Dad is a very organized man. So he had all the type, um, the address, where it's going, and his name. So we got all that cleared out of customs, and we, uh, they took us all the way. Uh, it was Redfern, they had a hall, and um, we went uh, in Cleveland Street. We went there, and we did the first Mass. The people are so happy really happy to see a Coptic priest. They haven't seen him maybe for a few years. And they didn't have a mass, they didn't have a, you know, like that link between the, their original land and, and Australia. Yeah, and you were talking about the large boxes of books and it makes sense because mm. there would be no books here for any Nothing. because there's no, no priests no, here. No, maybe a few Ashbeya, but Dad brought even Ashbeyas for the congregation as well. And uh, the book that uh, Hulegi, that you pray the mass with it, uh, he didn't know what to expect, and w which was right. He brought enormous amount for a few years because he doesn't know how long is the next shipment is going to come. So yeah. he, he was ready. He was ready for it. Yvonne, thank you so much for your time and for joining us. It's been wonderful chatting with you.